The lost hiker Emily Sotelo has been found. There are up to 50 search and rescue crews and canine teams risking their lives. There was Black Hawk helicopter searching. They did everything they could, but it just wasn't possible to reach her in time. And she didn't make it. And I'd, I'd say we know basically what happened. She went off the trail, we know basically where. And I'd like to start sharing some of these things. It might take more than one video. And my purpose is sharing information and knowledge so it doesn't happen to anyone else. And none of this is blaming Emily or family or loved ones. She was young, she made a mistake, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm getting old now. People used to respect gray beards. I've been through a lot. Somehow I made it. I believe I have some valuable knowledge and skills in these areas. And I'd like to share. And one person who's been in the news is uh, Captain Michael Eastman of New Hampshire Fish and Game Law Enforcement Division. And he shared a lot of valuable knowledge. I'd like to read uh, a portion of an article in the Laconia Daily Sun. And I'll put the link in the video description so you can read the whole thing. There's some, some important knowledge here. The first rule to hiking safety is to be honest with yourself regarding your experience, fitness, knowledge, and ability. And this is a quote from Captain Eastman. If you're not prepared in a good condition to be hiking in ice, snow, and winds, and you've never done it before, you don't go out alone and you stay below the tree line. Once above the tree line on the mountains like Lafayette, conditions can rapidly deteriorate. On the night of Sotelo's ill-fated hike, temperatures on the mountain dropped to negative 30 due to wind chill means uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit plus 40 or 50 mile per hour winds is something like the equivalent of negative 30 Fahrenheit. Unfortunately it appears that Sotelo pushed beyond the tree line in an attempt to reach the summit before turning back downhill and winding off up trail winding up off trail. A quote from Eastman there is a 90 degree dog leg on that trail between the hut and the summit. This is a common area where people get waylaid. That was a point when she went off the trail. She started heading downhill and got into the drainage for Lafayette Brook. It was a very steep area and it took some of our searchers 20 minutes to get a quarter mile and they were well equipped. In the last video, that update I did on Emily when they were still searching for her, I brought up an example of two mountain runners. I believe that was January 2021. And they went off trail. On that, they left the trail accidentally on that same dog leg and went down that drainage, which eventually turns into uh, Lafayette Brook. And they were rescued, but just in time, in my opinion, they just barely were able to survive because the uh, helicopter reached them just in time, just in the nick of time in that same area. Here is a comment on the last video update on this channel. It was a comment by Gray T World. Quote, exactly what you described about missing the turn on this very same loop is what happened to my friends and I on the second hike in the White Mountains. Luckily it was during the summer, but it was still very frightening. We were extremely ill prepared, no maps, no lights, sneakers and day packs. Ended up turning a nine mile hike or so into something like 20. By the time we made our way back down, 
On the top of that, we came down to the wrong trailhead entirely as we rushed to beat the setting sun. We were two hours away from our cars by foot from there. We ended up calling a police for a ride back. And it was the greatest lesson I could have learned about hiking. R.I.P. Emily, mistakes are easy to make out there. And that's what it was. It's a tragic mistake. This is uh, another comment by DJ Sparky, quote, I'll be doing that loop again soon in memory. Seems like we should push for more trail markers. We don't need blue dots everywhere, but many trails have big gaps and false paths. It's very easy to make a wrong turn. Last time I did was on Mount Clay and it was cold and getting very dark. Lost my way in the alpine zone and thankfully was able to find the trail again. Unfortunately for me, fortunately for me, one other person had done the trail that day and I was able to follow the footprints down. I was close. Person just barely made it. So there's been a lot of talk about making the trails better and particularly that one dock leg, dog leg that Captain Eastman mentioned and where uh, Emily left the trail and other people have, other people have gotten into trouble there. And we should, I, I, I think that will be done. Um, but here's the thing, um, in the White Mountains in particular and a lot of trails, there, there are a number of places where you can accidentally leave the trail um, because it's not a road, it's not a highway, it's never going to be as well marked as that or like a hiking trail, a walking trail in the city that's all paved and it's basically almost impossible to lose a trail. You're hiking in the White Mountains, particularly 4,000 footers, um, and it's never going to be like that. Why? Well, you get a lot of snow at the top, it melts in the spring, you get <laughs> brooks, it look, could be even looking like rivers coming down the trail. You make a trail, that's great. Uh, that path that you've just cleared can easily turn into a creek. And then the water, just the way water naturally flows, it's going to find an area that's easier and go off into a drainage. And the water is like clearing an area so that that dry creek bed, drainage bed, can look more like a trail than the trail does. And then you get some snow on there and people don't know which way to go. And then there's even footprints going the wrong way and maybe somebody realizes that he went the wrong way, turned around, that's still having the effect of packing down a trail and another person goes the wrong way, another person does. So then it gets dark, somebody doesn't have a flashlight. It's been said that Emily didn't have a flashlight I don't think we know, but likely she didn't. So a person doesn't have a flashlight. Or even if they do, uh, your flashlight batteries can go dead or it can malfunction, you can lose it. Or it's weaker than you thought, it's hard to follow the trail. You get wind and blowing snow, particularly above the tree line. Now it's white out. Um, in warmer temperatures, you can have fog, a 4,000 footer Okay, 5,000 feet, I mean, a mile is basically 5,000 feet. Okay, you're a mile up above sea level. Um, you can be in the clouds that somebody at the Oceanside Beach is looking at your mountain, seeing the clouds go across the top of the mountain. You can call it fog, I call it being in the clouds. You're like an aircraft now, wondering why you can't see. So it's really easy to lose a trail. You can put up signs clear as day. Put up a sign on a post clear as day. You get blowing snow and there's white out. There's fog. You can't see 10 feet in front of you. Literally. I, I drove the top of uh, Mount Washington once and I got lost in the parking lot. I mean just briefly because I'd, I'd wait for clouds to blow by and there's a break and I could see a car now that was 30 feet away. I couldn't see it before. 
So you, you can never make a trail safe as far as all weather conditions. It, it just can't be done all times a year. There's always going to be risk involved and you've got to learn these things and then decide what kind of risks you want to take and what kind you don't, what's too dangerous for you and know when to turn around. And again, I'll link in the description this article in the, in the Laconia Daily Sun and I'll be posting more videos with more links. But Captain Eastman, in my opinion, has given really good advice about hypothermia and how it affects you. Because it's like a double whammy. You can't see the trail because it's basically impossible. You lose the trail and then you're getting hypothermic. And I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not going to go beyond my knowledge. I try not to. But I know how it works to some extent. I've had hypothermia a number of times. Hypothermia is tough on the internal organs. And one of the internal organs that hits the first and the worst is your brain. Okay, so now you lose a trail in these terrible conditions where it's hard for your body to physically survive and you don't have a brain that's able to think clearly anymore. You, you can't make good decisions. You can even start to make irrational or what an observer, a warm observer would say was crazy decisions, just doing irrational things. You can get amnesia, forget why you're there, where you are from hypothermia can cause amnesia at the very worst time. And then as I'll put again, I think it was EIN, EIN press wire. I'll put a link in the description to that article about the case in January 2021 where those other two mountain runners lost the trail in that same area, that same dog leg, and went down that same drainage that be eventually becomes Lafayette Brook. And they had hypothermia and it just became physically impossible from to go any further. And I mean, if you're warm from the point where Emily's body was found, if you look on a map and you're thinking like if it's a summer and you're in your normal warm state, it doesn't look like much of a hike. People have said like, well, she was almost there. Well, she was if she wasn't hypothermic and lost and not being able to make clear decisions and just not physically being able to go any further. I mean, we don't know what actually happened in her case. We do know the case of those two hikers in 2021. They just did what they were able to do and then just what saved them was they were able to take one of the cell phones put it in their armpit warm enough, warm it up enough to get it working and call for help and help reach them in the nick of time. But they, they were done. They just physically couldn't go any further. So what is it teaching us? Is that you need to know when to turn around. You can have all these survival skills. You know, I make survival videos. I go out in the woods and I do these wonderful things <laughs> for entertainment and it's also teaching people, but you know what? I know my limits. You'll notice I don't hike up to a 4,000 footer and try to do these things above the tree line. I mean, I'd need a safety crew behind me and even so, it would be dangerous. There's some things that are too dangerous. You have to know when to turn around. Before you get hypothermia, you're getting cold. You can see it's cold here above the tree line. It's going to be worse. So turn around when you can still take care of yourself, when you can still make it back. A lot of people saying, okay, make a fire. Make a fire 4,000 feet up on the ridge above the tree line in 50 mile an hour winds blowing snow. And some areas is chest deep snow when you're hypothermic. Okay, it's not possible. You get to a state where it's just not possible. If you stopped a lot earlier, you're a little bit cold, 
or it's starting to get a little unwise. You stop there and you saw the materials and you had the, the lighter and the equipment to get a little fire going, warm up. So you're not in danger of hypothermia and then say, okay, I'm feeling good. I got some daylight. I'm going to head back. That you can do. But, you know, people can admire my survival skills, whatever. I, I can't do just anything. There's a time for any one of us to turn back. So I thank you guys for joining me for this video about what happened. She made a mistake. She underestimated the danger, wanted to get a certain number of peaks before 20th birthday. So she didn't turn back. And at some point, it's just not possible to save yourself. And uh, there are conditions where it's not possible for rescuers to reach you. No matter how hard they try, how heroic they are. And we've lost people. We've lost people in the White Mountains, our rescuers, I mean. Not this time, but past years. People might be in a parking lot and they can actually see the top of the mountain. And as the crow flies, it's not even really all that far. I'm not sure I'd have to <laughs> measure it, but it might be from the parking lot to that peak and a straight line, absolute straight line, like a bird might possibly be able to fly. Maybe it's two miles to that peak. Well, we're not birds. <laughs> it's a long, twisting journey to get there. It's going to take hours. And in the wrong weather conditions, it might not even be possible for human beings, hikers to do. An aircraft can only go through a certain amount of weather, some weather the aircraft can't go. And if you lose a trail, you accidentally lose a trail, there's thousands of thousands, can be tens of thousands of acres to search. And it can take days and days to find someone. And you can only last maybe a day out there. Maybe a day. I believe in this case, this hiker was gone the first day. The first night she passed. That's what I really think happened. And it's common. But maybe it'll be the last two days. Probably not three. Two days is probably your limit. Conditions like that. But it's going to take likely a week or weeks to find the person. And if you get a storm, then the remains um, won't be found until spring, probably in all likelihood. Or not found at all. Because uh, this earthly temple that God's given us, it kind of, I think of it like recycled to the ground. I mean, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we were taken from the ground. And that's where we go. Um, so, we prayed. I believe in God. I believe that He hears prayers. I believe that He hears all prayers. And also, I believe that God answers all prayers. He communicates with us. But here's the thing. God doesn't always answer the prayers in the way that we want. And that, in this case, I mean, I wanted Emily to be found alive, unharmed. And it's tragic when uh, anyone passes. Anyone. You can be 100 years old and, you know, still, it's still tragic. Um, but Emily, I mean, we saw her beautiful face on the internet and on TV, she's beautiful, young, hadn't turned 20 years old yet, uh, bright, in a prestigious college, I believe, doing well, bright future ahead of her, everything. Tragic, tragic loss. Um, but, 
the earthly remains were recovered. Um, from what I understand, the family and loved ones or people of faith, they had, a, I believe, a Christian memorial service um, and were separated for now. I mean, I didn't know her, but they are separated for her, not forever. For now, they'll see her again in a better place. And I believe I'll meet her one day. But it, w it was a tragic loss. So, I'm just doing what I can do. 50 search crews and canine teams and all those people couldn't save her. I would have liked to go. I, I had responsibilities. I wasn't able to make it to actually the, uh, the search. I'm trying to do what I can do. And if it brings honor to her, that's good. And if it saves a life, maybe, I mean, I thank you guys for respectful and helpful comments. Um, and we can work together. This is like a survival community, bushcraft, outdoor, loving community. I think we can save a lot of lives. Um, this video is already getting real long. It's more I have to say. Um, so I'll sign off for now, guys. Thank you for joining me. And God bless you. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23.